Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner and this is stage 13 of the Giro d'Italia. They're finishing in Verona. So I brought my men's Road World Championship jersey from 2004. Now they finished there, they had the World Championships there two years, 1999 when I was there helping Chan McRae and he went top five. In 2004 I was riding for a small team here in the US called Webcore and I went over there to finish off the season at the Road World Championships and went eighth on the race. Now, when we were finishing, I was off the back when we went up the climb and I got back on on the last lap. As we come into the last turn there with about 700 meters to go, I sw it's a right turn and I sw swung straight onto the Spanish team's wheel, Oscar Freire. He was getting the lead out to the finish and I thought this is fantastic. I took the rider off the wheel and slotted in there and had a perfect spot. Now I didn't have any dreams of winning the sprint from that particular point, but I knew if I could just hold Oscar Freire's wheel all the way to the line, a podium or a top five was definitely doable. Problem was they do a hard right followed by left and then my gear skipped and I got taken off by none other than Eric Zobel and ended up finishing eighth at the World Championships that year. It was a fun experience for me. First time, only time I finished top 10 at the World Championships racing for the US team. So fabulous experience. I brought the jersey, still has the numbers on and it's unwashed so it has the dirt and sweat from Verona on this jersey. So a little part of Italy sitting right next to my left shoulder here for the butterfly effect. Now let's get to the racing. 198 kilometers long, 125 miles in distance, and nothing really happens at the start. Three riders, Simone Polo, Umberto Maringo, and Samueli Rivi, take off right from the start, and they're given about five and a half, six minutes lead there, most on today's stage. It's gonna be a sleeper for the guys in the back, which is fantastic for Remco Evenepoel. Now keep that in mind because Remco had some bad legs two, three stages ago when we were going up the gravel roads there in Italy and he popped off and lost two minutes. But he's had multiple days now to recover from that effort. This is, this is big and this is important because when Remco Evenepoel had bad legs on that stage, maybe it was just from calories, maybe it was the length of the Jura. We don't know, he's a young kid. He could have blown up for any reason. But if it's just calories, if it was just his descending skills in the dirt roads and sprinting trying to come out of those, now he's had two big days to recover. And today is a fabulous day for the legs to recover for Remco. Keep that in mind tomorrow's stage. If we see him riding good again on tomorrow's stage, certainly yesterday's stage 12 and today's stage 13 were basically recovery days where he could fuel up and put those calories back in that might have cost him getting dropped there on the sands of Italy two stages ago. Now, let's get back to the action. Up front, the three leaders, Simone Pelot with 120, 130K to go. We're talking about 80 miles to go from the finish line. Decides the attack is two breakaway companions. This is never done in a bike race. And so Pelot is really, he's writing new chapters here on how to race from the breakaway. They will catch him and bring him back, but they have no chance of going to the line because you have all the sprinter teams back there chasing. Ineos never has to touch the front. It's Yumbo Visma, Quebeca Asos, all riding back there with UAE Team Emirates jumping in. When we get under 10 kilometers to go, it starts really getting exciting. They bring the breakaway back, and it's my man Victor Campernotz up there. Quebeco Asso's rider, and he's riding for none other than Giacomo Nizzolo. Giacomo Nizzolo and I were teammates back in the day with Radio Shack. I raced with him at Torino Adriatico. He is an amazing guy. I roomed with him during that week of Torino and just love the guy all the way around. But he has never won a stage officially here at the Giro, and now he's got going all in on today's stage. They come under two kilometers to go, and you'll see Bora Hansgrohe start really taking over at the front. Bonard and Daniel Oss with Peter Sagan third wheel. Once we get a little bit further, we start going 1.5. You'll see Sagan slip off his teammate's wheel, and he wants to get back there with the guys that are really fast because he knows his two lead-out guys don't have speed and can't take them all the way to the line. Their job, stay at the front, keep it together, and keep it smooth and fast, but they don't have that acceleration to do that 500 to 250 meter lead out that Peter Sagan needs, so he's gonna go back and find some sprinters. Now, Jumbo Visma will slot in. 
And this is where it gets tricky. This is, has massive effect on today's stage. With 700 meters, there's a right turn there, and it's Daniel Oss on the front, and Afini starts coming off his wheel before you go into the left and takes the lead at the left. Daniel Oss now is starting to get fatigued and tired, and, Deck, and sorry, Afini up there is going fast, and he's trying to lead out his sprinters back there. You have David Decker that's just third wheel, and behind back there, Dylan Grunewig and their pure sprinters, really who Afini's doing the work for. But now he's been in the wind for since 700 meters. As you go into the left with 600 meters, he takes the lead officially, but his power is too much, and Daniel Oss is opening up a gap. 100 meters later, we'll pop into a right turn, and we're going to come out with 500 meters to go, and now the gap to Athene is getting legit, and looks like he could possibly win stage 13 of this Giro. He's all the way on the right side of the road, and the whole peloton is on the left. Things get interesting, and the reason why Athene can slip away is Daniel Oss is dying, so he does the little chicken wing, and that's that's to tell the rider behind that I'm dying. I need you to come through. Nobody's coming through. We'll see Daniel Oss look under the armpit. That's how they see what's happening behind him. They'll just check under the armpit like that. He realizes it's David Decker, Yumbo Visma, teammates of Eduardo Affini, who's up the road right now getting ready to win stage 13. Once he sees that, this is the kiss of death, and he knows he's going to feel some pain in his legs. He knows the Yumbo Visma rider is now opening up the gap on purpose, and he's not going to come through and take a pull. So Daniel Oss just bites down hard and starts pulling as fast as he can, but is still losing time to Afini, who's all the way on the right side of the road. Coming up the left is UAE Team Emirates, and they know now that they got to start their sprint a little earlier than they had planned. They go. Fernando Gaviria starts his sprint at the same time when they were coming up the left. Giacomo Nizzolo's coming from 10, 12 spots back on the right. Giacomo Nizzolo and all the sprinters on today's stage are all starting sprints starting their sprint much sooner than they would like. Sprinters like to start at 200 meters before the line, and they're starting at 6 and 500 meters before the line. Now Giacomo Nizzolo flies up the right side, takes a pause when he gets to the front on the right side of the peloton there, of the sprinters. Then he jumps all the way over to the left on Fernando Gaviria's wheel, and he's hoping Fernando Gaviria can just take him all the way to the line. Fernando Gaviria had lost his saddle at some point in time with about... 400 to 300 meters to go. Jack and Monizola will go all the way from the left side of the road and start going to the right to reel in Affini. And he knows, sprinters know, once they see him, they got to reel him in. He's catching him about 150, 125 meters to go, and he's slingshotting off Affini's wheel at about 100 meters before the line to take a spectacular tearjerker at this year's Giro d'Italia. Folks, he has been second more than 10 times at the Giro. He's worn the Sprint Leaders jersey and won the Sprint Leaders jersey without winning stages at this Giro. So it is a massive win for Giacomo Nizzolo and Quebec Assos to take this stage. He is feeling fabulous at this moment at the Giro. Back there when he saw Giacomo, when he saw Affini there going to the line, I'm sure he was wondering whether or not if he can get him. He's been sprinting for 400 meters when he comes up to the wheel there of Affini, but he's reeling in the Yumbo Visma rider, slingshotting off and just taking a beautiful win. Now keep in mind, behind, in third place, Peter Sagan salvages and keeps his Jura Sprint Leaders jersey at this year's Giro d'Italia by getting a podium on today's stage. Affini, the Yumbo Visma rider, held on for second, but Giacomo Nizzolo, my old teammate from Radio Shack, well-deserved win. It was really heartfelt here for me personally. He's a fabulous rider. I've roomed with him many times when we were teammates throughout the Trino Adriatico race when I was race leader that particular year. So I loved seeing Giacomo Nizzolo on the podium, taking a victory at this year's Giro. It was fabulous. Keep in mind, tomorrow's stage, the real favorites are gonna come out. It's the Monte Zonkalon climb, and it is hard and fierce. Egon Bernal has to keep the form fantastic, and now you gotta ask yourself, 
Two days rest, is it enough for Remco Evenepoel to come back in and try to put some kind of stamp at this year's Giro d'Italia on the GC? Tomorrow's stage is going to be exciting. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys real soon.